Are you thinking about purchasing a property here in Montana to use as an Airbnb income property? In this video, we'll tell you everything you need to know if that's what you're thinking about doing. One of the main things you need to know is that many towns here in Montana have started cracking down on short-term rentals and where you can have them. Here in Whitefish, there are very few spots where you can have short-term rentals. This is one of them. Here at Big Mountain Resort, everywhere on this property you can use as a short-term rental. So like I said a minute ago, you really have to make sure that where you're going to buy allows short-term rentals. The other thing that's a little tricky, as you can see the subdivision behind me is a newer subdivision and a lot of these are still owned by the developer so they haven't made the rules. Well I've heard that this particular subdivision is it allows Airbnbs right now or short-term rentals because it's not in the covenants. As soon as the owners take control of the HOA they're going to get rid of it. So that's another thing you should really be aware of. That's something that happens a lot of the time where the developer starts a subdivision, builds a bunch of houses, and then he hands it over to the owners for the HOA, and then they change all the rules and they make it the way they want it. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't want short-term rentals next door to them because they don't want to hear a party going every weekend next door. So a big thing around here are the different rental companies. So if you think you're going to manage it or just hand over the management to a rental company, there are many to choose from and they all offer different services and obviously different prices. It can range from 18% all the way up to 40%. The, the condos that were behind me on the mountain, I believe the company up there charges 40% of your rent uh, to manage it for you and that it puts you on, the, on their own advertising and, and they market it for you so if you don't want to pay 40 percent do it yourself the problem you have up at the mountain for example is that people will google big mountain resort rentals well of course their site comes up first um, and they're going to get the top billing so you may not get as many rentals as you would booking with them and that's why they can charge such a high price but it really pays to look around, check out the different companies and make sure you can find one that works for you. If you are going to do it yourself, uh, the problem around here right now, and I'm assuming it's all over the state, is finding people to clean for you on a regular basis. Obviously, if you're renting it out and you have it booked up uh, and you need to do a quick turnaround, having a good cleaner is imperative so you can rent it out to the next guy and not get a horrible review that the place was dirty and not cleaned. So that's another thing to keep in mind. There is a huge shortage of workers around here and cleaning companies, so that's one thing you're really gonna have to make sure you have nailed down before you start advertising your place for rent. So I was talking a minute ago about the different rental companies. Uh, the, the other thing you need to check on with them is what they're going to charge you if there's a problem. So let's say uh, in your house or condo or whatever you have that you're renting out, if you have a plumbing issue and you need just a plumber to come out and fix a toilet or a sink or whatever it may be, some of these companies, they'll charge you like $50 an hour just to go out there and meet the plumber and you know make sure the plumber does what he says he's going to do and then you're also paying the bill for the plumber on top of that so again if you're going to buy out here and use something for an airbnb there is money to be made with it but there are also a lot of expenses that people don't think about that can add up and if you're only renting it out you know part time of the year it may not be worth it uh, with the different fees and the different management companies um, and just the, the pain of trying to find cleaners and, and people to work for you because, like I said, there it's, we're in such a labor shortage around here right now that that could come back and make your Airbnb experience pretty poor and 
uh, or actually it'll make your the guests of your Airbnb, it could make it pretty poor for them. And as you can imagine, if you start getting bad reviews, nobody's going to rent from you. And there goes your income that you thought you're going to have for an Airbnb property. One last thing you should look into is if you are going to do this, you need to set this up as a business. And I would suggest, you know, talking to a lawyer. I have a lawyer friend who I talked to about this video. So he, he said that, you know, setting up an LLC or some kind of company or some kind of corporation uh, for this particular house and business allows you to put everything into that LLC or corporation um, so you can you know obviously write stuff off and you're protected if something crazy happens with your with the house uh, while you're using it as an Airbnb. I know that Airbnb and VRBO, I should mention them too, uh, and there's probably other companies nowadays as well, but I know they offer insurance, but one thing you may want to check is the amount of insurance they offer and exactly what that covers. Let's say the worst case scenario is the house burns down or somebody you know, causes it to burn down or they just totally trash the place. Be sure to check into what the Airbnb insurance or VRBO insurance is going to cover or more importantly what your homeowner's insurance is going to cover because I have a feeling if they find out that this damage was caused because you were renting it out to a total stranger, <laughs> they may decide that they're not going to cover you on that. So I would say that's the biggest thing that you need to check into just to protect your house and make sure that uh, you are going to turn this into a decent income uh, while you're owning this house for that purpose. So to recap, if you are looking for Airbnbs, the first thing is to make sure they even allow it uh, at the place you're trying to buy. Check your insurance and how much that's going to cover and then check into the different rental companies in the town you're going to do this in. And if you do all these things, there's, there's opportunity to make good money on this, but there also, there's also opportunity if you don't do your homework to get burned and end up having a house that's costing you a bunch of money and it's not penciling for what you paid for it in this current market. Thank you for watching our video. Please call, text, or email for more information. And don't forget to watch our other videos about Montana.